Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. On behalf of all here and all the faiths and beliefs present, we remember all those who lost their lives on September 11, 2001. We honor the heroism of all those that rushed to come to the aid of the innocent victims of those heinous attacks. Our hearts and souls go out to those who lost their lives for their fellow citizens that faithful day. We ask for protection of all the first responders who risk their lives for us every day and for the soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, and Coast Guardsmen who protect us around the clock and around the world. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ethan Cockrell, and I have served as the SGA president and student trustee. This morning, we have come together to remember this tragedy that took place in our country on this day 23 years ago, when our way of life, our very freedom, came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist attacks. We are privileged to have Franklinton American Legion Post 52 Commander Chris Smith with us today to share his thoughts about this tragic day. Chris served his country in North Carolina Army National Guard from 1993 to 2005. Chris enlisted as a petroleum supply specialist serving in units in Lenore and Raleigh upon graduation from North Carolina State University in 1998. Chris was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the infantry with the 30th Armored Brigade, serving as various National Guard armories in Lumberton, Roseboro, and Smithfield, North Carolina. In 2003, while serving as an executive officer of B Company, 120 Infantry Unit was federalized for active duty under the 1st Infantry Division, the Big Red One. Trained and deployed into combat in Operation Iraq Freedom in 2004, B Company redeployed and returned statewide in January of 2005. Chris' military service spanned over 12 years, resigning his commission at rank of First Lieutenant and earning the Army Reserve Components Achievement Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, Global War on Terrorism Exponentiary Medal, the Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, the Armed Forces Reserve Medal and Mobilization, the Army Service Ribbon, and the Combat Infantry Badge. As a 16-year member of the American Legion at Post 52 in Franklinton, Chris serves as Post Commander. Chris resides in Youngsville with his wife, Kathy, 
who is a high school math teacher, and his son, and his son Sam. Chris works as a forester for Hunt Forest Resorts LLC Supervisors Woodward in Spring Hope, North Carolina. Please join me in welcoming Post 52 Commander Chris Smith. Thank you, Ethan, for the introduction. <clears throat> and thank you to all you folks, especially you young folks, younger than myself, out here um, taking time out of your day for this important event. <clears throat> it is an honor and a privilege to provide this message on behalf of the American Legion. I would like to set the stage by identifying the locations of the September 11th, 2001 attacks and the number of people killed that day. The World Trade Centers, 2,753 souls. The Pentagon, 184 souls. The crash site of United Flight 93. Shanksville, Pennsylvania, 44 souls. Cowardly attack by Al-Qaeda terrorists loyal to Osama bin Laden took the lives of a combined 2,981 people that day, including firefighters, police officers, paramedics, military personnel, and ordinary defenseless citizens. Over 6,000 people were injured. We must also remember that people are still dying today because of the effects of these attacks. First responders, steel workers, construction workers, and citizens in the direct path of some of these locations have died afterwards and continue to die today because of cancers, neurological disorders, <clears throat> and post-traumatic stress disorder, which has led to substance abuse and sometimes the suicide many years after the trauma of the event. Many survivors of this horrific day have demons that haunt them and take away their spirit to live. Our fellow Americans are still suffering. Today we thank these individuals and their families that carry on their legacy of sacrifice for the defense of American freedom. All went about their lives that September morning, not realizing that the world was gonna change that day. But as I have had a rush of thoughts uh, come over me, I admit some honorable, some of the thoughts were honorable and some of them were hateful. They came to me as I composed this message for you. I began to think about how the world, and more importantly, our country has changed. Or has it changed? Has it changed for the better, or has it changed negatively? From these positive thoughts and some frustrations, my message was composed to you. I saw a statement on social media saying, the best way to honor those lost on 9-11 is to be the people that we were on 9-12. Think about that, that's profound. The people that we were, were. <clears throat> These souls lost were not done so in vain. Their murder was a cause of national unity. It was a rejuvenation of American decency. <clears throat> a decency to one another. Remember folks standing in, I remember folks standing in line to give blood, you know, hundreds of people. I remember folks organizing food and water to sustain the first responders as they worked to search the rubble of the crash sites. It was a time that America showed the people of the world what it meant to be American. And as the country started to slowly stand back up on its two feet, wounded, but not down. The days after the attack on the pile, you know, the pile of rubble at the trade centers, <clears throat> the 43rd president of the United States, George W. Bush, 
he gathered there and gathered with those workers. And he heard, you know, he started talking in a, in a megaphone, a bullhorn. And um, he heard a worker say, we can't hear you. And the president replied, I can hear you. The rest of the world also hears you. And the people who knock these buildings down will hear from all of us soon. And with the president's declaration, September 11th changed the lives of nearly all of our nation's military, including mine. The global war on terror was birthed. As a soldier that served in combat in Operation Iraqi Freedom, I'd like to offer you my perception of what America now calls Patriot Day. It is unfortunate for our nation that not this whole lawn be covered with people right now. <clears throat> but I thank you because you're here and you are doing your part. <clears throat> On this 23rd anniversary of the attack, I do not have a deep-rooted confidence that we in the United States are any safer than we were that fateful day. Personally, when I think about that, think back to that September day, I do feel like I was safe then. Our military was strong. Heck, it had to be. I was in it. And that man right there was in it and served with me. And some of you others out here may have been in it. <clears throat> we, are going about our, we were going about our normal routines being Americans. The economy was good for most Americans. The country saw decent wages, low unemployment, and our military was not engaged in a war. <clears throat> That's what soldiers want, you know. We don't want war. <clears throat> most Americans were comfortable doing American things, like taking vacations, attending sporting events, going to community college, making fashion statements, and enjoying our families and communities. First responders were serving and protecting our communities with professionalism and devotion. Within a blink of an eye at 9.06 a.m., as the first plane hit the North Tower, reality quickly changed from that false sense of security to fear and insecurity for many of us. As any good part-time soldier would, I went home and readied my gear for a call-up. But I kind of find that laughable now, because it was National Guard, it's a part-time soldier. We're not, de we're not capable of deploying like right then. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't know what else to do, and that's what I did. And I, I have a feeling a lot of you that were um, around that day, on September 11th, you, you kind of did what was natural to you, and you did what you thought was right, and you can look back on it and say, no, that was a little foolish that day. <clears throat> the killing of almost 3,000 citizens that day, yeah, that was not logical. So I can understand irrational thinking. We quickly learned that our nation's security blanket was torn apart by radical Islamic terrorists. As I reflect back today and I look forward to tomorrow, I look at our country and I ask myself, are we safe today? Are we waiting for that mended security blanket to be destroyed again? Personally, I have concerns about that. Um, you may as well. <clears throat> the events of 9-11 woke me up to the fact that we as citizens have an obligation to our country to be informed citizens. Our Constitution protects the rights of citizens legally questioning our government. We, the electorate, must be informed and use our own judgment to discern which politician has the courage and determination to stare down our nation's enemies, to deter unnecessary war, and protect our homeland. It is our, our duty, being TV witnesses. I was proud of myself. I thought of that when I was writing this. I was like, yeah, we watched it on TV. We watched these events on TV. Uh, folks here most likely did. Um, so we are TV witnesses of the horror that September day. To never let younger generations forget why we are here today. That's my purpose. <clears throat> 
But before one can forget, they must know about it. Our kids and their kids, they must know the truths of that horrible day. They must know the truths of sacrifice, heroism, and love that were shown that day and years after by strangers to one another. On that day and many other days following, there was no political culture, there was no political, cultural, economic, racial, sociological divide. There was none of that. We were Americans, Americans united. <clears throat> we are still Americans today, but I sense we are divided. What would it take for our government officials to congregate on the steps of the United States Capitol today as one America like it did on 9-11? Another attack? Our guard has been let down. Sometimes our government institutions suppress our God-given rights under the Constitution. Sometimes we devalue our allegiance to our own country and create a sharp divide. Our truly American institutions of God, family, and country have been weakened again. It doesn't matter your political party. We all bleed red blood. I believe we have to look at humanity, not the government, for the answer. What is that answer? How do we unite and protect ourselves? Every individual must do their part. We must take a step forward, not backward. We must salute the flag and honor our country. Honoring it has never been and never will be perfect. We have, we have to learn from our mistakes. We must humble ourselves to our God. We must build patriotic families. We must help neighbors in need. We must pray for our God to protect us. Today, Patriot Day should be a day of self-reflection. Many civic and charitable organizations are working together, are working right now, uh, to better our communities. Our actions should not benefit ourselves, but they should benefit others. In closing, I want to thank you for your time. I challenge you to invite someone to this um, ceremony next year or another Patriot Day ceremony uh, next year. Keep the memory of this dark time lit for generations to come. I ask that you be proud that you are an American. Again, thank you for your time. Have a good day. Good morning. My name is Joanna Choplin. I serve as the treasurer for the Student Government Association. We would like to thank Post 52 Commander Chris Smith for coming here today to reflect on one of the most tragic days in our history and to honor those that lost their lives that day. 23 years have passed since the attacks on September 11, 2001. For those of us who experienced that day, it remains vivid and unforgettable. Those born after it inherited a world forever and tragically altered. As our 40th President Reagan so eloquently stated, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. The day after September 11, 2001, Americans came together in an extraordinary display of unity and compassion. In that moment, nothing else mattered but our shared humanity, our resilience, and our commitment to support one another. The divisions that often seemed so significant faded away and we stood as one. The only way we will truly triumph over terrorism and overcome the senseless tragedy of that day is by continuing to celebrate the kindness and strength of the human spirit. It is in our compassion, our generosity, and our unwavering unity that we find the power to heal 
and to rise above the forces of hatred and violence. We ask that you remember the courage of our policemen and women, firefighters and EMS, who rushed into burning towers to bring thousands to safety. We must never forget. In closing, I would like to thank everyone for being here today. Please join us in the multi-purpose room for refreshments and please allow our servicemen and women to go through the line first. It is because of their service and sacrifice that we are gathered here today. Thank you.